what I'm looking to show you here is how to paint or craft a canyon terrain. So I'm going to create a terrain in default grey. So I'll just hold the control key down and left click on the icon there. Go into the terrain editor. I'm going to set it to solid and increase the resolution to massive and use new. So we've got a blank canvas. You have got one level of undo by pressing control Z like so. Undo again, but you can't use this undo key. It doesn't work. If you want more levels of undo than that, if you're working on things bit by bit, you have to go out of the train lab and back in again, and then you'll have the undo stages in the main viewport. Right, hopefully I'm not going to make any mistakes. Hmm. Okay, right, so using the paintbrush, and fairly small size but smooth, I'm going to paint in the track of my canyon. So I'm uh, just going to have the camera down here somewhere, and then just squiggle along a bit. It might pause every so often to fill in the details and then take it out to the right and exit like so. Right, And at this point you can invert and you can see now we've got a canyon with very high edges but these high edges are probably a bit too high. So if you use the raise and lower button here, left click on that and then drag the control to the right, you can lower those edges and now I'm going to paint in the walls, I'll just broaden the brush a bit, roughly and I'm going to make sure it does, I don't get all the way to the top so it creates hilly effect around the outside and I also want to close off the end of the canyon at that end so just paint that in roughly so we've now got a less sharp edge at the top here and and uh, this trough that's created at the bottom the the key is when I'm looking out of this I can't quite see from that angle we don't want to see out of the end of this canyon really so it's better to just close it off like that and then you won't see any sharp edges when you run out of terrain what you can do while you've got your brush set fairly small is create some islands that go up fairly high that's uh, we'll create put them in put the highest ones in the distance so you've got a few like that and then now we're going to add some erosion and some mounds now I'm going to invert it again to add the mounds and that will have the effect of lifting these dark areas up which are the top so the, the mounds will dig into the surface so left click on mounds and drag it to the right and you can see those will actually come out as pits the other thing you can do at this point is erode this slightly watch these edges very closely because the erode look might, like, might look quite subtle when it's appeared in there but it has quite a strong effect when you see it right I'm going to invert again and at this stage I'm going to add more mounds on this side and that will tend to fill in these dark areas oh, and these little highlights here I'm going to brush out because that's where applying the erosion effect so just get your brush and brush those out because that's where the camera is going to go so we don't want anything in front of the camera that looks like that right mounds again into and that'll build up in the dark area don't add too many and then finally I'm going to add some areas where there has been a, a like a cut off um, and it'll create an edge which looks like hard stone where it's been unable to erode. I also might want to produce a terrace in this area. There's a bit of a hill here, I'm looking at that, and could add some feature in there. So if I wanted to add to terrace, say set that to third height, and then you can brush an area down. I'll just use this view here to see what's going on. I'll increase the size of the brush. There we go, and just brush that area down a bit. So that'll be quite smooth at the moment. And create a different effect. If it's looking a bit too smooth, when well, we can use mounds again to add. If that, if the the very lowest area is disappearing though, and we want to have this river effect, so we have to brush a low area in. We're not wanting to exit here, remember. So I'll just do that. So I brush round that bit there, brush across here, and across there. Because my camera is going to be down here somewhere. Make sure there's nothing in front of the camera, and you want to be seeing around this area like there's like it's been the, the path of water it's, 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 it's cut its way through the stone so just try and work that into the plot somehow but I'm still leaving these high sections so they've been left behind I'll do mounds again so that'll put some noise in there um, erode a little bit not too much and then we'll try and create some of these uh, areas which have been left behind so lower that down to the point where it's around the edges but not crossing any of the inner islands and then you can raise and lower and lower that section a bit not too much just a bit you'll see there's a step appeared in there these steps is what I'm looking for go in again and when the first island appears 
lower again and that'll leave like a spike then you can go down again and get another island in this and lower again don't lower too much because this effect can be quite dramatic when you see it in effect and then we've got another one with an island there so lower again and you can do a, like a small interval and lower just very slightly and then when I lift that up you'll see the effect of that terracing there right so let's have a look how this looks in the main view okay I'll switch the overhead view and zoom back you see the position of my camera that's infinite plane is going to be water this is my terrain I'm going to enlarge that so that the camera fits into this bottom left hand corner there and I'll just move it back so I'm looking into that open open end there now uh, by enlarging it the terrain sunk quite a long way under the water surface of planning so I'll just lift that up so I don't know how it's going to look yet so I switch to the main view I've got a bit of a preview here but I can show you in the main view what we've got so that's where the trains running out so I need to move my camera up and round so I don't see the train run out and that's where it's exiting the valley so we don't want to see too much of that either and then I'm going to lift the terrain up perhaps increase its height a bit to make it a bit more dramatic and then uh, I'll get it so that this flat area is the water so I want some water in here but uh, not too much so just to get the impression that there's a bit of a river going on here you can see uh, the, f the haze is showing off the terracing there but it's not too easy to see so at this point probably the best thing I could do I can see the open end of the train there so we just need to move the camera left a bit and to avoid that being that opening being too obvious and that's okay at that so is it sort of a narrow thin view we've created here then well it looks a bit sharp there and and if this there's some facets that are appearing here so I'm fairly close to the surface of the train the final thing you can do is increase the resolution of the train if you try smoothing it, you're going to lose detail that's the only drawback of smoothing it in fact I'll do that now and I'll show you so we can smooth it once and see how much detail in the surface we've lost because overall structure you see how how it's reduced the level of detail so I'll just use control Z you can see now we can go control Z and bring that back so when I hang on to this detail so instead of taking that approach I'll switch it up to gigantic resolution which is going to slow going in and out of the labs but let's say we're, we're nearly ready to be done here anyway and so I'll now render that and you can see that we've not lost the detail but it has smoothed down this and there's less obvious facets in this so when you've got quite a crinkly surface like this I recommend using uh, uh, probably for a terrain high dynamic range uh, lighting would be good because it'll it'll get around the sides so this area is in darkness because it's under direct sunlight oh what I was saying about the document setup you could try changing the uh, document setup so that it was like two to one or three to one and then you you get sort of this letterbox effect which might look quite good and that would allow you uh, to widen the field of view for example just being careful not to catch anything that's at the end of the terrain or pull the camera back you see we've reached the end of the terrain here so I'll move that camera around and up and in so like so that's how that looks there right I'm just a bit disturbed about this hole there so I'd like to lose sight of that so I'll pull the camera further around to the right and hopefully not catch the end of the terrain there and uh, I'll apply an appropriate material then so I'll go for something that looks suitably rocky um, I think I'll get I'll find where the plane is and put a water material on for that one you see it's quite slow in and out of the material lab now because of having the high resolution terrain and I've got a sky prepared here that uses HDRI lighting so it should get into all the different facets of the surface so you'll get a better idea of how the filtering has worked for this so there you go there's a fairly quick recipe for creating a canyon effect so these steps this terrace these uh, erosion marks I'm just going to move things around a little bit further so we don't see that opening at the end so move that around there possibly sink that in now I'm going to sink it by creating uh, increasing the height of the train lower the bottom into the water more so you get a bit more of a watery effect so oh, there's the opening again move around to the right lift point down let's have a look 
So ah, run out of the end of the terrain there. So you can see there's a bit of a, a little bit of a battle going on to just get everything in and not show you any of the bits which uh, which don't quite work. So there you go. That's the end of the video. Hope you found that interesting and that you'll have a go at using this recipe in your own renders.